Hey friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm super excited because today we are doing breakfast freezer meals, which is gonna be so fun. So the plan is to do some breakfast freezer meals today, test out the recipes over the next month and a half and see if we like them, and then do another big batch day of breakfast freezer meals closer to when I'm due so that we have them for postpartum. So I'm excited and we have a lot to get done, so let's get started. Okay, so the most important part of this is making a list so that you can keep yourself in order and also so I don't forget to tell you anything. So I made a list on this side. We have all of the prep that we need to do in order of most time consuming to least time consuming. And then I have all of the recipes and ideas, like I said, just so I don't forget anything. So we're gonna work off of this list today. I'll tell you what we're making. We're going to do egg sandwiches with English muffins and bagels. We're gonna do breakfast burritos. We're gonna do waffles that obviously we'll then put in the freezer and we can just pop in the toaster. And then we're also gonna do like the little egg muffin cups with whatever leftover ingredients we have. So let's get to it. Okay, so I got turkey bacon, organic turkey bacon on sale for like a dollar seventy-five. I wanna say. Um, at one of the discount food stores near me. So I got two, three, five packs. I'm thinking I will use half of it for the breakfast sandwiches. That will be meat on the breakfast sandwiches. And then the other half I will chop up and put in the egg muffins. And if we have any left over, I'll probably just bag it up and freeze it and be able to pull it out and microwave it whenever we want some bacon. So the easiest way I know how to make turkey bacon is on cookie sheets in the oven. So I lined cookie sheets with parchment paper and then I spread out the turkey bacon on those cookie sheets. And turkey bacon is way less greasy than regular bacon, so it didn't really have much of a mess, but I still used the parchment paper to save some time with cleanup. I cooked the turkey bacon in the oven for about 15 minutes on 325 degrees. And some of the pieces, I did check them halfway through, some of the pieces I had to flip to the other side to make sure that it didn't get too crispy. While that was cooking, I threw some sausage on the stove and this was two packs of pork sausage. And so I let that sit while uh, the bacon cooked. Aside from making all of these freezer meals, I had two priorities while I was cooking. One was to drink more water and the other was to do as much as I could sitting down just to give my feet a break and make sure I wasn't too worn out at the end of the day. So the sausage was almost done on the stove after about 10 minutes. It didn't take long, so I put salt and pepper and sage on it. Those three seasonings were enough for me. You will see a little bit later on that I made way too much sausage for these freezer meals, but it's not a problem at all. Since I use such a light seasoning, I'll be able to freeze these in portion size bags and use them for a future recipe. I could even pull them out for next time I do breakfast freezer meals. So it's not a problem at all. I did it while the um, stove was already messy and while I already had this pan dirty. So it saved me time in the long run. The next project was to crack the eggs and I decided originally to do these in two separate bowls because I thought that I wanted one bowl for the breakfast sandwiches and one bowl for the breakfast burritos. I did this because I knew I had nine or 10 breakfast sandwiches and I wanted to make sure I had an egg for each one. Even though they were gonna be scrambled and put in a baking dish, I still wanted to make sure I had enough protein in each breakfast sandwich so I could just cut it up later accordingly. But I ended up using both of these bowls for the breakfast sandwiches. The eggs in the oven didn't really turn out as I expected. I wanted more of a thicker egg. And so since I put them in these Pyrex baking dishes and there wasn't a ton of eggs in each one, they just turned out a lot thinner. So I ended up putting two pieces of egg on the breakfast sandwiches and I'll show you all of that later. But I just kind of wanted to give you a recap of why I did what I did. As I said in the beginning, this video was a very much my trial run. So I know for next time to prepare to have more eggs and I'm even gonna to put together a grocery list that you can get in the description box so that you can plan accordingly and have all your supplies on hand. I ended up not doing the egg muffins because I ran out of eggs later on, and that's totally fine. I'll just do the egg muffins the next time I do breakfast freezer meals, but I wanna make sure you have enough for what you need to get done. So yeah, I'll throw together a grocery list and you can grab that in the description box. 
All right, finally, all of the turkey bacon was done. So I just threw that all onto one tray so that I could get the eggs into the oven. Like I said, these eggs were the ones that I made for the breakfast sandwiches. I didn't really wanna scramble them on the stove. I wanted them to be uh, more solid and not fall apart when I reheated them. And so I put these in the oven at 325 for about 15 to 20 minutes. I definitely kept checking on them. My lower dish cooked faster than the upper one, and so then I ended up switching those. So just keep an eye on it when you do it. While the eggs were in the oven, I knew the best thing that I could do would be to whip up the waffle mix. And I used this protein waffle mix, which I'm really excited about. I love how they turned out. But here is the recipe on the back in case you're wondering. I ended up using the entire box of waffles because I wanted to make as many as possible. I also had a regular box of waffle mix on hand in case these didn't turn out as expected, but I think these will work and I definitely will get a few more boxes when I do the large batch of freezer meals for postpartum. Okay, so for reference, I had four cups of mix in this box and then I used two and a half cup of water and then I also threw in some oil at the end and I loved that consistency that that gave me. I even let this sit for a few minutes after I mixed it together because I wanted the waffles to be more of a thicker consistency and they definitely turned out to be what I wanted them to be. I was planning to add fruit in here as well, so that's totally up to you. All right, so our eggs are done in the oven and they look amazing. So it is time to assemble our breakfast sandwiches and finish up our very first breakfast freezer meal. Devin was a huge help in some of these projects because he definitely made the process quicker by helping me. And so I do have a few pieces of advice that I will change for next time. Uh, my first one is I wish that I would have wrapped the egg and meat separate. I could have wrapped it in plastic wrap and then put it between the bagel and then wrapped the whole bagel in parchment paper and put it in the freezer. The reason I say this is because I pulled one out the next morning to try it and the bagel obviously warmed up faster than the frozen egg and meat. So it would be easy enough to still do it this way, but also just wrap the bacon and the egg in plastic wrap and then the whole bagel in parchment paper to avoid some of that overcooking when you're reheating the bagel. The other note that I have on these breakfast sandwiches is I plan to do them without cheese so that we can just throw cheese on later. I wanted to make sure that I was trying things without cheese in case the new baby doesn't tolerate cheese while breastfeeding. I wanted to make sure that I still had options that I like that don't have any dairy in them. And these are easy enough to pull out and warm up and add cheese on when you're doing that. So that's the motivation behind just doing eggs and meat. You can obviously do gluten-free bagels if you're gluten-free or avoid cheese altogether if you are dairy-free. So we did the English muffins as well and we did these the same exact way as the bagels and we ended up using the same wrappers to store these in the freezer. If you do that as well, make sure that you wrap these up in parchment paper really well to avoid any freezer burn. Ultimately, I was very happy with how these turned out. They were super easy to make and assemble, and I love that it used ingredients that I was using for some of the other breakfast recipes as well. When you're doing freezer meals and batch cooking like this, it's important to find recipes that have like ingredients, so you're not trying to make you know all of these different recipes and prepare all of these different ingredients, but rather you're making the same ingredients to fit many recipes. So I was very happy with the outcome of this and I'm excited to have these on hand. They'll be a nice, easy thing that I can just throw in the microwave for a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, depending on how thick the egg is. And I'll just love enjoying these postpartum while I am just busy snuggling my baby in the mornings.
Okay, so I had Devin cut up the vegetables for the breakfast burritos. We decided to do chopped peppers and chopped onions for the breakfast burritos. And I'll show you in a little bit how we sauteed them and prepared them for the breakfast burritos. But he was a big help in cutting these into very tiny pieces to make sure that it wasn't too much pepper and onion in each bite of the burrito. So I'm very thankful that he was able to take some time to help me with some of this prep. This is a step that you could do the night before you plan to do freezer meals to save you some time. We actually did the onions a few days before this, so we didn't even have to worry about those. So this is one of those things that you can work ahead on and give yourself a lighter load the day that you go to make these breakfast freezer meals. The fun part about these breakfast freezer meals was almost every ingredient was on sale at the discounted food store. So this bag of about seven peppers we got for only 99 cents, which is amazing. Devin just had to cut around some of the bad parts, but otherwise most of it was good to go. And the bagels were also discounted. They were on the clearance rack at Giant. And so if you're ever making any type of breakfast sandwich, definitely make sure to check those racks first. Um, sometimes it's just bread that is a few days over the date that they wanna sell it by, but it's still good. It doesn't have mold or anything like that. So make sure that you shop around and snag those deals when you can. You could also snag them and freeze those bagels and then come back to use them later when you're ready to do your batch cooking day. We used the same pan for all of the ingredients that we needed to cook on the stove. So I just went ahead and I did not clean out this pan after I made the sausage in it. So it had a little bit of sausage grease and that's what I used to saute the vegetables with a little bit of butter added. And that only took about maybe five minutes to get those veggies soft. And then they were ready to go on the breakfast burritos. I also scrambled about a dozen more eggs for the breakfast burritos. And I wanted those to be scrambled in that same pan on the stove because I like the texture of those better for burritos. It's a little bit softer and I was able to add cheese later. While the veggies were cooking on the stove, I figured this was the perfect time to start working on the waffles because the waffle maker was plugged in right next to the veggies so I could keep an eye on both things, which made it super easy to get two things done at once. So I used about a cup of mix for the waffles and I tried to spread it around a little bit uh, to make it more even. If you are going to go just buy a cheap waffle maker for this occasion to have frozen waffles on hand that you know you can trust the ingredients in and you made it yourself, whether it's homemade or from a box, I would definitely recommend looking for one that can be the same size as your toaster. So this one is a big circle, but I can quarter it very easily. So you could do that or you could get a perfect square waffle maker for your toaster. So the veggies finished up and now it was time to start the eggs. And like I said, I used the same pan for all of these things on the stove top that made it super easy and way less cleanup at the end of the day. And then I just needed to scramble the eggs to prep them for the breakfast burritos so that we would have enough time to let everything cool before assembling them and putting them in the freezer.
everything was ready then for us to assemble the breakfast burritos. I found these small flour tortillas on sale, so that's what I decided to use, but you could use a bigger burrito if you wanted something a little bit bigger. I would say that these each fit about an egg and a half in them, as well as the veggies and the meat. Now the eggs were uh, still a little bit warm, which was perfect because that was the bottom ingredient. It was way easier to fold up the tortilla then, but the veggies and the sausage were both cooled. So I didn't have to worry about it being too hot once I was ready to put them in the freezer. And it was the perfect amount for what we made. We had a little bit of leftover veggies, but I can reuse those for the egg muffins when I come back around to make those. And I forgot that we had a lot of sausage left over. So with the grocery list, I'm going to make the portions, the amount that you need to buy in order to have exactly what you need. But if you decide to get more because it's on sale or you want to have more on hand in the freezer, you can always make everything at once and then freeze this breakfast sausage later or use it for more burritos. You can double the recipe. It's totally up to you what you want to do. I'm just going to bag this up and freeze it for later for when I come back to make the burritos for postpartum in case I want to make any adjustments because I haven't tried these yet. So I will let you know what, if anything, I would change. But so far they look amazing and I'm really excited to have these on hand. I love a good breakfast burrito and it'll be super easy to pull these out of the freezer and reheat them. Maybe even put a little hot sauce on the side to dip it in because I love some hot sauce in my breakfast burritos. I wouldn't wanna put hot sauce in initially before freezing because that would make the tortilla too soft. And so make sure that you don't have any extra liquid in your burrito before you freeze it. As you can see for storing these, I wrapped them in plastic wrap. And I did this because I was putting it right back into the tortilla bag so that I could recycle that bag. But you could also skip this plastic wrap step and just put them in a freezer bag. I just wanted to be extra safe since the tortilla bag is not a freezer bag. I knew wrapping them in plastic wrap would give them extra protection against freezer burn. And the last thing I want is for things to go bad after I've spent all day preparing them. So it's up to you what method you wanna use for freezing them. I also think maybe a plastic container could work if you don't like to use plastic bags. So you could do that or you could do a glass container. Totally up to you. Um, you can make it your own and do whatever fits best for your family. And here everything is, it feels so good to have this all done. We have the waffles, the breakfast sandwiches, and we also froze up the extra bacon. So we could use that even as a side for the waffles. And then we have two bags of burritos, which was 10 total. You can double this recipe if you want to. Hey friends, it was so much fun hanging out in the kitchen together today. I'm so glad that you watched through this video. I hope that you got some fresh ideas for breakfast freezer meals. Remember that breakfast is a super important meal and so it's not worth skipping. If you can prepare ahead, make the dirty dishes all at once and have stuff in the freezer to just grab and go, um, that's really ideal because then your body gets the nutrition that it needs in the morning. Um, I wanna just leave you with this encouragement that spending time in the kitchen has to come with flexibility, no matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what your schedule is. Um, I thought I would get more done today than I did and I could be super disappointed, but I knew that I had to go into it with a flexible mind, knowing that I can always finish things later. Um, I even didn't get a chance to clean up the dishes before we left the house, which I always like to do that, so I come home to a peaceful house. But that just didn't happen, we ran out of time. So just know that you have to be flexible in the kitchen and flexible with yourself, and um, yeah, I hope you learned something from this video, and let me know if you try any of the new recipes.